At first glance, you might think engineering is hard, and some might even say it's boring. But what if I told you that everyone has a little bit of an engineer in them, and how engineering can also be a fun, creative endeavor similar to making music, painting, video games, or making YouTube videos like this one? Let me explain. Let's say you look at yourself in the mirror, and you say, how do I get big muscles? And then you think about the different ways you can achieve that, and perhaps do some research. And then you do stuff, maybe some push-ups, some curls, well, turns out it didn't really work out as you wanted. So what do you do? Well, one option is to just give up. But to explain my point, you didn't give up. So you try new things, or the same things in new ways. You try push-ups and curls in new ways, and you realize that diet and sleep are pretty important. You do this until you get the desired result, and this process applies to other things as well, like fixing your car, getting better sleep, things like that. Now let's see what an engineer does. Let's say there's this engineer and uh, we'll call him Bob. He's a civil engineer. The city that hired him and his team needs to figure out a solution to its traffic problem. Bob and his team do not have answers right away. Is that bad? Of course not. They're not supposed to have all the answers from the start. It's about figuring out what needs to be done, doing research, brainstorming, and the like. And that also means that in engineering, there will be mistakes, failures, just like in everyone's life. From those, we see what went wrong and what we can do to do better next time. So engineering and trying to solve an everyday problem are not too different, and that both try to find ways to get a desired result. Now, before I talk about the creative side of engineering, I just want to mention that this video is sponsored by PCBWay. More on them later. So how is engineering creative and fun? For this, I'm going to use one of my favorite video games, Kerbal Space Program, a game where you design rockets so that you can sail the stars and stuff like that. I mean, if you think about it, rocket design by itself doesn't sound very interesting, unless you're a nerd like me. But that's the entire premise of Kerbal Space Program. Creativity thrives when there is no one way of doing things. And that is exactly how it goes in this game. You can make the biggest rockets if you have grand ideas, or the best performing ones for the job for the least amount of money and weight, which is basically what engineering is. Now, of course, engineering and creative activities have their differences, like the complex equations and processes that I'll have to use in my final exam. But those are just puzzles to be solved, and even then, Art, video games, and cooking have their own puzzles. So far, we've talked about how engineering is similar to real-life problem-solving, and how the creative aspects are similar to other creative activities. But how exactly are they different? Well, let's look at the engineering design process to see what's different about the two. So let's say we want to design an object-avoiding, self-driving robot. The first step of the process is that we list out what our robot needs to be able to do. Some requirements would be that it can move forward, can detect objects, and then use that information to avoid the object, and is not expensive because this is just a DIY project, and maybe some other requirements. Generally, we would also define quantitative requirements for those characteristics. Once we account for the requirements, we try to find potential solutions. Perhaps we do some research about different sensors that can be used to detect objects like cameras or distance sensors. What about the motors used to move the whole thing? And how would we control all of the electronics? So once you have a list of ideas that could solve the problem, you move on to step Bruh. three, which is to start designing. Now designing could mean drawing it on paper, like how engineers did it a few decades ago, or you can design using something called computer-aided design. As the name suggests, it is design that is aided by computers. That is a very bad definition, but you get what I mean. So this is where engineering and everyday problem solving become a little bit different. But interestingly, this is also where engineering and video games, cooking, making art become fast friends. I mean, look at this CAD design and look at rocket design in Kerbal Space Program. They're basically indistinguishable if you squint your eyes. All right, so after you have a design that you are happy with, you get the parts needed so that you can assemble the robot which is the next step. After that, you test it and see if it meets the requirements to get the desired result. Oops, the robot doesn't do everything correctly the first time. Well, that's what redesigns are for. Once you know what parts don't work, you try and figure out why it doesn't work, and then you make changes. So the only difference between engineering design process and real life problem solving are the equations, the design softwares, assembling the project, and some other technical things. But again, those are just puzzles to be solved. But how would you go about making your electronic or mechanical design and making it real? Well, introducing PCBWay. For the electronics, once you have your design using an electronic design software, 
you can go over to PCBWay's site to send them your design to have it made. From there, you can select the required parameters like the layers on your board, solder mask types, thicknesses, etc. PCBWay should give you a cost and shipping time estimate, and once you are happy with the options, you can send your design in. For making mechanical designs, you can send in your design to be manufactured with CNC milling, 3D printing, sheet metal manufacturing, or injection molding. Within about a week, you should get your designed electronic board or mechanical part to your front door. All right, back to the video. So now you know a little bit about what engineering is all about, and hopefully you see the simplicity as well as the creativity of it. But you might be wondering, how exactly do I make PCBs or design mechanical parts or program a robot? Turns out this video is a part of a larger video series totaling five videos. The other four videos go over the skills for CAD design of mechanical parts, electronics concepts, PCB design, and Arduino programming. You'll also see how those skills are incorporated into a real DIY project like an object avoiding robot mentioned earlier. The video series is meant to get you started with the basic skills needed for DIY projects. And from those skills, you can build upon them to do more advanced and creative projects. Disclaimer, I am not a professional engineer yet, maybe in two years or so. And this series is only meant to get you started on basic DIY engineering projects for yourself. So for personal entertainment or just learning things on your own. So obviously this is by no means professional advice. Being able to create things using skills in electronic, mechanical, and software design is a very rewarding experience. Not unlike cooking, making music, or making a YouTube video, for example. And who knows, maybe engineering might be useful in your life, though obviously I'm biased as an engineering student. So, so the next videos of the series will come out a few days or so at a time. So just keep an eye out for those.